Tragic story about fame thrust upon an unsuspecting girl who really couldn't cope with it at all. Zsa, Zsa on the other hand, hand, on the other hand, handled it beautifully with great style, with great panache. But who's? But porn can be so destructive to those who play in it. Sometimes. We marketed this book, uh, Linda Lovelace, um, to the adult entertainment community. Um, we took out a booth at a uh, porn convention in Atlantic City. Oh, really? Yes, and that was really very nice. Um, people got behind this in the... Now, I have to be clear, this book won a couple literary awards, I think four. Um, really, is a, this is the first statement viewed with charity and love toward a woman who was more or less destroyed by the process of fame, fame in the porn world. Um, and the book was awarded a Sybarite Award from Lola Bastinato, who was a spokesperson for Playboy TV. And she got behind the book as, in a very generous and kind way, as did John Stavros of the John Stavros um, Adult Entertainment C Committee, blah, blah, who was a model for Andy Warhol um, and a, a silkscreen of John Stavros's backside. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, a, a silk screen by Andy Warhol of John Stavros's backside sold for several million dollars to a Japanese collector last year. And John is very charming and funny about how none of that money went to him. <laughs> <laughs> My point is that John is an important person in the adult entertainment community and very connected to the Andy Warhol intelligentsia. And he gave the opening night party for the release of the Linda Lace Lovelace book. So my point is that the adult entertainment community, um, and this is not a porn book, this is a book about pornography, has been very generous with us in endorsing it and really seeing its merits. I think they appreciated the um, gentle um, sense of understanding we, and, and, and compassion. The author, Darwin Porter, by the way, um, showed toward Linda. A word about how that Linda Lovelace book was compiled. Um, here we go. Linda, here's some facts about Linda. She made Deep Throat in 1972. Um, it had all the censorship battles. It had all the court trials. It had the Watergate hell. Everything went on. And by 1988, Linda had been through her feminist period. She had been both endorsed and then had feuded with the feminists over her role as a player in, in the domination of women by the porn industry. In 1988, and this is what the understanding that she died in a car crash in Denver in 2002, um, she was called into the editorial offices of the then most powerful literary agency in, in probably America, the Jay Guerin uh, Agency, um, to, to tell her stories about her reactions in Hollywood with sexual services she performed on members of the Hollywood community and with the understanding that she had indeed been highly prized and highly paid for her fellatio services to movie stars in Hollywood. The book lists a litany of stars that she did this for, John Wayne, all the members of the Rat Pack, Spiro Agnew, um, many, many others, Tony Curtis, Burt Lancaster, um, and she talked about this in 1988 in the offices of... Yeah, I remember she also mentioned Sammy Davis Jr. too. Sammy Davis was her major lead-in factor to the Hollywood community. Sammy Davis, probably the hippest member of the Rat Pack, I always saw it, mm -hmm. <laughs> said that if you had not been sexually serviced by Linda Lovelace, you were not cool. And immediately that sparked the herd instinct. Everybody wanted a blowjob from Linda and would pay for it. So Linda had the double um, career of servicing Hollywood movie stars. Everybody had a story about Linda. Linda had a story about everybody. Um, and there was also the ongoing lure of her being in additional porno films. And now at big money prices. 
uh, that is the story that is brought out in the book and Linda's turning against the porn world and turning against all that and blah, 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 marrying a man called, uh, divorcing her pimp husband, uh, truck trainer, who she maintains abused her and held a gun at her head to force her to do these degrading acts. The book goes into Linda's own recollection of her work as a, uh, as a, as a player on the fetish market of South Florida. Ch Chuck was marketing her in a variety of fetish-related, um, what's the word, settings or contexts, um, all of them degrading, um, all of them startling. Linda's recollections are laid out in the book of first this and then that and finally fellatio. The girl found her niche and the book goes on to tell what led to her destruction downfall and her ongoing legacy. Back to the sources though, in 1988, Linda was dragged into an office with two or three hungry editors and a psychologist from the university of some university in Texas to tell her tale. Journalists heard Linda tell these tales. Darwin Porter, the author, was right. one of the people present as Linda poured out her tales with names and with dates and with fetish fascinations and with the emotional context of how these movie stars were when she was providing their, when she was giving them a blowjob for about $1,000 a pop was the going rate at the time. All of this was recorded by the three journalists. The project back in 1988 was anticipated to be marketed at auction to a major New York City publisher. It would have been a blockbuster. And then Linda in the form of um, uh, Lyle Stewart, her publisher at the time, was hit with a huge lawsuit. Um, from a complicated lawsuit. The point is that everybody got scared, everybody went home, everybody dropped Linda like a hot potato. Nobody would touch her ever again for fear of the legal lawsuit fears at the time. And it took Blood Moon until 2013 to produce the book that drew upon those interviews with Darwin Porter in 1988 in the offices of the Jay Guerin organization. The book is out at last. We have published it and it's um, with all the names and, and names. dates and things like that. And emotional contexts, yes. It's a very good time piece into the backwoods Hollywood of its era. Um, who was who and who was doing what to whom and what was valued as a hip experience. Wow. Wow. Blood Moon Productions. Blood Moon. We named the company after an erotic thriller we published a long time ago. We had to devise a new name when we reordered <laughs> the company. <laughs> and we're very aware of the, of, the, of the company's name with implications to mysticism and cycles of the moon and the fertility rites, if you like. Wow. You got to give a name to something. You got to be something. In life. Dan Force Prince. <laughs> I do my best. Publisher. <laughs> yes. Blood Moon, Blood baby. Moon. How nice. And how uh, nice to be in Florida. With I you know. Now. Oh, man. Fun. Hey, it's nice meeting you. And by the way, there is a tour going on through Florida. Last night, um, the Fort Lauderdale Film Festival was very nice to have me speak at their uh, Cinema Paradiso about the Zsa, Zsa book. And we did a bang up job talking about the political context of Zsa, Zsa her sister Magda, her mother Jolie, her sister Ava. Slideshow presentation really bringing out the depth of actresses who if we didn't publish, if we hadn't published this book, I'm afraid that their legacy might have been that of greater bimbos than they really are. Now, I'm not saying that the Gabors were bimbos, but in the popular mind, there's never been a comprehensive biography of the Gabors published by anyone. We've done it, the first. Um, it's easy to be campy about the Gabors. Our book really talks about their depth as the glue that held a lot of diplomatic uh, resolutions together. Um, so, last night we had a discussion about the Gabor book at the Fort Lauderdale Film Festival. Tonight there is a session at the World Erotic Art Museum on Miami Beach. We'll be talking about the implications of the Linda Lovelace theme. We've done some talks at the Broward County Library uh, yesterday. We've got a tour through South Florida that includes um, Books and Books in Coral Gables. Um, that is, um, what is Saturday night coming up, the 19th. Uh, we've got some um, gated communities, including the, the beautiful Boca Raton Resort. In my neighborhood. Your neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, Boca Raton. What are, I think, what are there? More shady corporations headquartered in Boca Raton <laughs> than anywhere else in America. <laughs> I'll fit in. <laughs> and we've got two or three other things that... Um, bookstores and gated communities and um, 
various meetings throughout South Florida. It's all on our website at www.bloodmoonproductions. I'll put that up and uh, let people know about it. Uh, and it's... also, if they want to purchase the books, uh, they can go there too, right? Well, I'm playing the publishing game these days. I'm president and founder of Blood Moon Productions. Um, its present name is from 2004. Prior to this, my earlier life was working as a writer and researcher for the Fromer Travel Guides. Um, the author of the books, Darwin Porter, was indeed the lead player at the Fromer Travel Guides and the lead player in terms of writing and researching the actual guides. When you are a writer of a publication that famous and you announce that you're in town to the tourist office of Budapest or Vienna for Fromer's Austria, Fromer's Hungary, we, Darwin was the author, Darwin Porter, the author of these two books, was the author of those. Out come trotting all kinds of celebrities from the woodwork if you ask to meet them. And we were always very clear on wanting to meet people who remembered the Gabors from the old days prior to World War II. And indeed, the Gabors are something of the national heroines of Hungary. And a lot of very dignified hostesses remember anecdotes and gossip associated with the Gabors. And all of their stories went into the book on the Gabors. Um, Everybody had a story about either Linda Lovelace or the Gabors, raunchy or otherwise. We fit them all in, unified it into an editorial whole, put in a library index, and we've got the two, the world's two comprehensive biographies of these two amazing cult figures out on the market today. And promoting, Definitely. And promoting it in South Florida. I am the escort for both Zsa and Linda. What a trip. Me. You. God has a sense Dan of humor. Danforth Prince. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Al. Thank you so hey, much. Hey, it's Thank nice you meeting you, man. Oh, I'm great delighted. Guy. You're a great guy. <laughs> Thanks, And Al. keep up this good work, man. And, and looking forward for some more publications of these wonderful people. And also, you're bringing out information that people didn't even know. I've never and I didn't even know. Nobody knows this stuff. And again, I didn't choreograph that. It's Darwin Porter who writes these things. If I might say something about a book that we'll be releasing in January, I think this is very culturally important. We are releasing a book called Pink Triangle. It reveals the feuds between the American century's three most famous, most celebrated authors, who include Gore Vidal, Truman Capote, and Tennessee Williams. Um, now, with the understanding that these three writers were the darlings of the Broadway theater world and the cinematic world, their, their works have been classified as the most, among the most important literary works of the 20th century. We are producing Pink Triangle by Darwin Porter, which is a recitation of the feuds that they maintained among themselves and among members of their entourage for fame, for better party invitations, for more stylish friends, for better boyfriends. We're putting it in this book. Uh, it is our most literarily ambitious book, and it is loaded with the kinds of gossip which, if you are looking to understand the American century and its artwork, you really should take a look at this book. Pink Triangle by Darwin Porter from Blood Moon Productions. I would love to talk to you about that Boogie when, Boogie. when you when you get it out. It'll be out soon. We're bringing it back to Florida. Oh, thank you thank for you. coming to your entertainment ticket. www.yeticket.com. I'll put that information up. Thank you for watching. Again, Dan, thank you very much. A joy. I really enjoyed Hello, it. Florida. It's fun to be here. It, that's why I've been down here for 23 up. years. <laughs> this is your entertainment ticket. Latest and greatest.